I want to call the Greenview Local School Board regular board meeting for June 29th, 2023 to order. Can you call the roll? Suzanne Arthur? Here. Chris Bailey? Here. Scott Powers? Absent. Megan Smith? Here. Teresa Wallace? Here. We have a quorum. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't believe we have any public participation tonight. Um, we have a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. A second. Thank you. Mrs. Arthur. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Powers. Mrs. Smith. Yes. And Mrs. Wallace. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, next is the treasurer's report. A, approve the minutes of the regular board meeting May 18th, 2023. B, approve the minutes of the special board meeting June 1st, 2023. C, approve the May financial reports. D, approve amended appropriations for May 2023. E, approve May month end advances. F, approve the final amended certificate of estimated resources for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2023. G, approve the final amended appropriations for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2023. H, approve the temporary appropriations for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2024. I approve the authorization of the treasurer to make advances from the general fund to other funds as needed to clear deficit balances for the end of the fiscal year. The treasurer shall report the actual amount of the advances to the board at the July regular board meeting. J approve a transfer in the amount of $12.42 from the Greenview High School Principals Fund to the Greenview High School Staff Fund to close out the staff fund. K approve copy of approve a transfer in the amount of $1,884.35 from Greenview Middle School Staff Fund to Greenview Middle School Principals Fund to close out the staff fund. L, approved then and now for O'Reilly Automotive Incorporated in the amount of $294.12. M, approved resolution for property tax advances. N, approved the fiscal year 2024 budget purpose statements for activity funds in the school district. O, approve donations as attached. $1,000 from the Jamestown Chamber of Commerce for the Jamestown Chamber of Commerce Scholarship at Greenview High School. $500 from Mark and Cindy Mash for the Terry Pickering Scholarship at Greenview High School. $210 from Eileen Stewart for four workbooks at Greenview Elementary School. $300 from the Greenview Elementary PTO, for the PTO Scholarship at the Greenview High School. Four tickets and four hats for the Ram Rally from the Dayton Dragons. $50 gift card from Harbor Freight Tools for Ram Rally. And $100 gift basket for the Ram Rally from Raising Canes. P, approve the treasurer's report items A through O as presented. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions? I know there's a lot on there this time. So the staff funds that are being closed out at this. Um, so, I'm trying to clean up some funds here. Um, there's an 018 fund and an 022 fund for both all three schools. Uh -huh. So these are closing out both the middle school and the half and the um, element, sorry, middle school and the high school mm -hmm. um, so that we can just consolidate some funds. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, then, then and now for O'Reilly. We just now got some invoices from them from 2021. They were <laughs> apparently sending them to the wrong email address. So that's why that's on there as a then and now. Questions? I have a motion. I'll move. Second. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Motion passes. Now we'll have the superintendent's update, teaching and learning, facilities, and operations. Okay, thank you, Madam President. I'm gonna pass around um, uh, some tables that I put together of the spring OSD data 
um, that we received back in May and as promised, uh, wanted to put in front of you. I'll just kind of give you an idea, kind of a bird's eye view of how our individual grade levels did um, in each of the content areas. So just to kind of acclimate yourself to what you're looking at, I've included there um, what would be the number for proficient and above. So again, those numbers indicate proficient and above. Um, I highlighted the box in green if it was around 70% or above, which is something to you know really be proud of. Um, ultimately, kind of 80 is the gold star number, but anytime you're in the neighborhood of seven and above, I'd say you're doing a pretty, a pretty good job. Um, also to the right of that in each category is the percent of students who fall um, above proficient in the accelerated or advanced category. Um, those numbers are also, you know, rather high. So I know you don't have anything to compare them to, though, but just kind of to consider, for example, you know, in grade seven, where 84% of our students were proficient or above in ELA, 60% of those actually were in the accelerated or advanced category. Again, it's something very much to be proud of. So highlighted um, the specific areas there in green. If the number is in bold, that means that it has improved since the year prior. And so we've got several areas in bold as well, where you can see in um, both ELA, math, and um, in science there, eighth grade science as well. Um, and then again, at the high school level. Um, if it's in italics, it, we stayed the same. So again, just kind of a, that's a lot of data there. That's just a brief snapshot, but it gives you an idea of how our students are performing. Just a caveat, you know, that we've instituted our benchmarking assessments. So whether that's iReady, or um, exact path at the high school level, or even study island in science and social studies. Um, it's nice to be able to use those tools to kind of do our check-ins to see how students are performing and then see ultimately with the um, state scores if our benchmarking assessments are matching. So if they're kind of good predictors. So some of that work, at least in the lower grades right now, really indicates that iReady is a pretty good indicator of um, how students are ultimately gonna perform on the state assessments. We're still looking at our high school um, assessment with exact path to see, um, really to learn more about it and, and see if it's the right tool for us. But there's a lot to be proud of there on that page, like saying it is, is an understatement. <laughs> so, uh, moving forward, also, this is our last week of high school summer school and our summer boost program, and I just wanted to share um, Danny Klusterman, who is working with students from anywhere from first grade to grade seven, had students working on, here's an example of some of his work, Summer Boost Camp 2023. Um, here's one, too, Greenview Summer Boost Camp. And then yet another one with the Eagle on it, on the boost camp. So students were designing these, of course, wearing them and, and all kinds of fun activities the students are participating in. So yeah. summer is always a fun time to like do work, but we're kind of let your hair down a little bit. It's a different vibe and it's fun to see the teachers enjoy and students as well. So hard to believe we're at the end of June, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, things that we're working on in-house are, believe it or not, preparing for new teacher orientation in August, as well as what the professional learning calendar is going to look like for 23-24. From a facility standpoint, we're looking at ways to improve some of the heating and cooling at the field house, right? We know that um, right now, you know, we can't make major improvements to that, but just kind of dabbling in what we could do to improve both the, the cooling right now and the heating right now, but unsuccessful as most of the measures have not been cost effective, but we'll continue to make sure that we improve, um, improve that space for students while they're in it. Um, we're going to have a holding pattern for um, some work that needs done at the elementary. If you'll remember in that back hallway, we have a broken part to a compressor. Um, so we have, there, there are three compressors in that back hallway. Um, two, one of them has the broken part. Two of them inevitably are going to need the part as well. To fix it is pretty labor intensive. So, and it's going to be, you know, pretty costly as well. So we're kind of waiting to see if we can get those other two parts so that when they go in there to do the work that they're able to do it. I mean, it could be a week or more of labor alone and it has to be dry and above, you know. So um, so we are kind of in limbo until we hopefully find some, you know, other parts right now they're on back order. Um, so that's not, yeah, not great news. So I, you know, I check in every week on an update to see if we found the part or where we're at. 
Um, but that, so we are kind of waiting until that gets fixed. Um, the transportation project, the electric and the fiber conduit was completed last week and now we're waiting on AES. So AES, um, they need to upgrade the service and the transformer. They are the next phase of the process. Um, I'm just gonna touch on the master facility planning piece, um, but I know there are resolutions here tonight and I know Tom is with us from Bond Council tonight and also Inga can probably chime in later um, to indicate more, but I just wanted to include it. Tonight, there are two resolutions you know, on the agenda for the board to approve um, that, you know, those declarations are going to identify what the millage is for the bond and also asking for the additional PI levy. Why the additional PI is that we think it could be beneficial to provide a proactive measure. Um, sh should we have future development, especially, um, and we do end up maybe using parts of the elementary or um, as our high school building, of course, is 20 years old, so that we, you know, have a little bit of a cushion to be able to provide for major facility projects or things that this inevitably will come up. And if they don't, great. And then maybe we could actually save a little bit of funds for the rainy day when those projects do, come, you know, come up and don't kind of leave us in a spot. Um, also, so then after this meeting, we'll file with the county auditor to certify the project, and yet still in July, we're, we will have a resolution that approves really proceeding with the bond issue. Um, we plan to go to the ballot in November to include both the B2 option as well as the additional LFIs to accompany that of a field house and practice fields. Um, one of the things that we're doing is on August 8th, the district will be hosting an event <clears throat> that we're calling the RAM Rally. And the Ram Rally will specifically be kind of like a district-wide back to school celebration of coming back to school, but also fundraising specifically for the field house and the practice fields. Um, right now, we're you know working on designing such that it looks like we would have vendors and also like um, our sports activities doing like involvement as well as food and. Um, a silent auction in the gym and bingo or silent auction in the auditoria and bingo in the gym. So, and among other things as we go through that. So Ms. DeWitt especially and myself are really connecting with stakeholders and looking for those that maybe want to partner or provide support or make donations. Some of the donations were already on the board agenda tonight and we know that others are coming in. So that's exciting. Um, I feel like I left a piece off. I think I think that's it for now. On that, onward to operations. Tonight you'll be proving um, the student handbooks and the code of conduct for the 23-24 school year. Not a, you know, not a lot of changes. I would just reiterate kind of the process I'm using as we continue to go through the handbooks. We focused on the student code of conduct this year. Specifically, we looked at the areas um, to make sure that one, we're relevant and also that we're consistent in our practices. So we looked at the areas of fighting and assault, as well as bus rules and the discipline ladder. So those were the focus areas for this year. And then we will continue to look at that and do that next year. So we'll just continue to kind of take it chunk by chunk, again, making sure that we're consistent where we need to be consistent and also that we're relevant in our practices. You're also going to find under new business, the approving school fees. Again, no major changes there except for one, and that is increasing the athletic participation fee from $100 to $125 to account for the rising costs of operations. Um, um, I continue to also work on the um, beginning stages of a preventative maintenance plan or preventative maintenance plan handbook. Um, that work will be ongoing, again, getting into a proactive spot as opposed to reactive and, and for planning purposes. Uh, the start of bus inspection started this week, and so far those have been going well. That's a big deal around here when the inspectors come out to take a look at the buses. So kudos to Jay, especially Brandenburg, for all of his work to make that happen. Um, kudos to Mrs. Fisher as the end of the fiscal year is a little rough in the treasurer's office, and there's it's just busy. Um, so thank you to her for all of the work that she is doing to make sure that we maintain our state and federal compliance requirements and all the financial reports that are associated. And finally, um, twice a year, uh, Ohio Revised Code, we're required to report out to the school board um, our numbers or our report on bully bullying and harassment. I have totals for you tonight at the elementary school of zero bullying investigations, zero were confirmed, of one harassment investigation, one confirmed incident. 
At the middle school, of 17 bullying investigations, zero were confirmed. Of 13 investigations and harassment, zero were confirmed. At the high school, of the four bullying investigation, one was confirmed, and of the nine investigations for harassment, five were confirmed. You can also find this information on our website. And this, Madam President, concludes my superintendent's update. Thank you, Dr. Wicker. Now, right, this time we're going to move on to new business. A, approve the revised district calendar for 2023-24 school year. B, approve student breakfast and lunch prices for the 2023-24 school year. High school lunch, $3.45. Middle school lunch, $3.45. Elementary school lunch, $3.20. Breakfast, $1.40. And milk, $0.55. Cents. C, approve school fees for the 2023-24 school year. D, approve the elementary student handbook code of conduct for the 2023-24 school year. E, approve the middle school student code of conduct handbook and code of conduct for the 23-24 school year. F, approve the high school student handbook and code of conduct for the 23-24 school year. G, approve the athletic handbook for the 23-24 school year. H, approve the service agreement for Premier Community Health for the 23 and 23, 23 and 24 school year. I, approve the village law enforcement contract. J, approve the resolution of necessity. K, approve the resolution of maximum maturity of bonds. And L, approve new business items A through K as presented. I'll jump in before we get to the resolution here. Approving a revised district calendar because it's a leap year and one day caught us. So there are no changes except for we picked up a day at the at Christmas, at the winter break. Um, and the, yeah, the breakfast and lunch the prices, they remain the same. Again, I already shared about the fees, um, the service agreement with the Premier Community Health. We um, contract our nurses through Premier Health. That's what that one is. Um, we have updated the village law enforcement contract. Um, they've raised their rates from $21 an hour to $24 an hour. Um, they are not making money on that. That is to cover their costs. And that, that's for another two-year contract. And then at this point, I would um, kind of pass the baton if there are any questions or if there are any comments about the resolution as it pertains to the master facility process. Um, I wanted to introduce to Mr. Tom Wilson. He's um, our bond counsel with Finsmore and Shoal. Um, he's here to answer any questions you would have on the resolutions that are on the agenda. He has been an immense help to both Sabrina and I um, as we've gone through this process. So um, he's, he answers every single question that I ask, even if I've asked it five times already, but um, um, he's been very extremely helpful. So, and he offered to come tonight. So we appreciate him doing that. Um, so if you have any questions on anything that's on there or you wanna. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, as the resolutions uh, set forth, this is the, the second segment of the, a plan of the state, um, original back from 2008 to 9. Um, percentages of the, uh, of the state and local are the same as the dollars that change just over time. Um, and then, uh, in addition to uh, the local share, there's a significant portion for uh, um, local funded initiatives that are not part of the co funded uh, state of Ohio. Um, when the when the district did its previous segment, first segment, um, it uh, at that point uh, there's a there's a maintenance requirement of, of, uh, that you set aside uh, the, the equivalent of a half mil uh, for 23 years, and the district did that back in the first segment uh, with uh, earmarking uh, dollars from the income tax levy. Um, so it's not necessary to go back for a, a maintenance. Uh, uh, piece, uh, but there is a, a continuing PI levy, uh, as was discussed, um, mm -hmm. for other types of uh, items and, and uh, either as they come up or as additional funds to support a, uh, a lease purchase type transaction. Uh, and this is the, this is the first step. Uh, the county auditor will uh, will calculate the, the millage for the bond issue. Um, what the dollar amount will be that's raised by the PI levy and, uh, and 
certify that back, then uh, we'll prepare the resolution uh, determining the proceed uh, issues. That, uh, they're two separate items, but it's a it's a vote for or against the entire package. It's just one one vote uh, up or down on both of these. Thank you so much. Do you have questions? No. I have a motion on the first Okay, thank you. Second. Thank you. Mrs. Wallace. Yes. Mrs. Arthur. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, this time we'll move on to personnel. A, approve the following classified substitutes for the seasonal work for the summer, Nikki Butts. B, Approve the following supplemental coaches for 23 24 school year Jennifer Van Zant, middle school, fall cheer, Ryan Haynes, high school head football certified, Jeff Lewis, high school head boys soccer, Nikki Hurley, high school head girls soccer certified, Jan Toby, high school head volleyball, Dave Kroger, high school assistant football 80%, John Enix, high school assistant football 80%, Andrew Collins, high school assistant football 80% certified. Brent Olds, high school assistant football 80% certified. Brent Nose, high school assistant football 80% certified. Tony Goodbar, seventh grade head football. Blaine Saunders, eighth grade head football. Evan Grooms, high school head girls tennis. Paul Thompson, high school head boys golf certified. Mark Mash, high school head girls golf certified. Shane Anderson, high school assistant girls soccer. Leah Reed, high school JV varsity assistant volleyball. Chris Phillips, middle school seventh assistant football. Joe Green, middle school eighth assistant football. Brooke Reinhardt, middle school seventh volleyball certified. Maria Timmons, middle school eighth volleyball. Mark Matt, ball site coordinator certified. Kyle Folk, high school assistant boys golf certified. Jason Litke, high school assistant girls tennis. Volunteers, Jerome Crosslight, high school assistant football. Neil Kasner, high school assistant football. Adrian Linslow. High school assistant volleyball and Logan Reed, middle school assistant football. C, approve the following certified teachers for summer programming for summer 2023, Robin Sweet. D, approve the following certified teachers, $25 an hour for summer 2023 data analysis professional learning, Don Wemble, Marie Gill, Alex Reaver, Dulcie Wilson, Brooke Rich, Debbie Lee, Chase Held, Carolyn Jones, Mark Matt. Sam Hook, Kevin Fisher, Amanda Hollingsworth, Cindy Terrell, Emily Horn, Tom Burr, Chris Robin, David Smith, Paul Thompson, and Ashley Bowling. E, approved Dalton Pate, $25 an hour for work associated with summer 2023 Orton Gillian training. F, approved Brittany DeWitt for $5,000 stipend for work as communications coordinator for the 23-24 school year. G, approve the following cooperating teaching stipends for the second semester 2023-22-23 school year. Faye Bernard, um, Julia, Julie Moore, Lauren Swain, Janet Wheeler at Greenview Elementary School, uh, Risa, Durr, Risa Durr at the high school, and Dale Benson at the middle school. Approve the resignation of Kylie Taylor, elementary teacher, effective June 30th, 2023. I approve the resignation of Samantha Bennett, middle school classroom aid, effective June 30th, 2023. J approve the resignation of Jacob George, special ed supervisor, effective July 31st, 2023. K approve the resignation of Katie Andres, elementary teacher, effective June 30th, 2023. L approve Emily Etzel, second grade teacher, one year limited contract, step one, for the 2023-24 school year contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. M approved Sarah Beth Engel, second grade teacher, one year limited contract, step zero for the 2023-24 school year contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. N approved Alyssa Bachman, kindergarten teacher, one year limited contract, step zero for the 2023-24 school year contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. O, approved Ruth Barron, elementary classroom aid, 
one year limited contract set five start date August 14th, 2023, contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. P approved Karen Lane, elementary classroom aid, one year limited contract, step one, start date August 14th, 2023, contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. Q approved Mary Lindsay Campbell, elementary preschool aid, one year limited contract, step zero, start date August 14th, 2023, contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. R approved Samantha Fisher, high school classroom aid, one year limited contract, step two, start date August 14th, 2023, contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. S approved Christy Fairchild, classroom aid, one year limited contract, step seven, start date August 14th, 2023, contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. T, approved employee change in status for residue from master's plus 30 to master's plus 45, step 10, effective for the 23-24 school year. U, approved the change in status for Laura Bowersox from master's plus 15 to master's plus 30, step 27, effective 2023-24 school year. V, approved an administrative contract for Pandora McCarty, special ed coordinator, two-year limited contract, for the 2023-24 and 24-25 school year at a salary of 89,000 contingent upon proper certification, background check, and completion of required paperwork. W, approved personnel items A through B as presented. So I would just like to welcome Mrs. Andy McCarty who comes to us from um, at, currently at uh, Blanchester High School. Uh, she has 26 years experience in education, 19 of those years in the classroom and at Clinton Massey, and then um, her administrative experience from Blanchester High. So um, aside from her qualifications and her experiences, something that the, the team really recognized was that um, like her focus on the individual student, um, her focus to serve students, and how like we really felt like she would engage with our families in a way that was consistent with the way in which uh, the Greenview way, if you will, the way in which we built relationships and have those interpersonal skills, and especially in this particular position that we know, you know, is so critical. So welcome. We are pleased welcome. to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you for bringing your family. I'm going to, yes. I'm actually going to, I'm going to have you introduce them since they came to you. <laughs> uh, my husband, Mike McCarty, and um, my son, Will, and my daughter, Pia. I'm um, going to be a senior and going to be a freshman. So, oh, welcome. and he is not in school. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I'll make a motion. Great. Thanks, Chris. I'll second. Thank you. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mrs. Arthur? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. All right. We have no discussion at this point. Uh, are there any comments or questions for the non-agenda items? I believe so. So at this time, we will move to executive session, and there will be no regular business after the executive session. Do I have a motion to enter executive session? Motion. I'll second. Sorry. And do I need to read this to discuss? We will enter into executive mm -hmm. session to discuss the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employee or official, or the investigation of charges or complaints against an employee, official, licensee, or student. So, motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Mrs. Mrs. Arthur. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mrs. Wallace. Yes. Thank you. 